Good afternoon and welcome to another swelteringly hot ICB TV. Today we've got a really great session coming up for you. Um, we are talking about software. Today in the house we have got um, our wonderful members Nicola Payne and Sylvia Borhill. Um, one of them loves Zero, one of them loves QuickBooks and we're going to be finding out why. Um, hopefully getting some real insights to help you if you are choosing your software or thinking about changing your software. Um, so just a quick hello. Hello Nicola Payne. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? And hello Sylvia Borhill. Hello. So right Nicola Payne, you are, you're both branch chairs aren't you? Um, so Nicola Payne, you're the branch chair for Cardiff, um, you're a full yeah. member, you've done your payroll qualification, we can all tell from your uh, designatory letters, and you are proudly showing your zero t-shirt behind you, as well as some ICB certificates. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, obviously you're based in Cardiff, but what, what can you tell us about your practice? Okay, hello. Um... Yeah, I did, I did just sort of swat up yesterday with some stats for you. So um, currently we have 42 clients in our books. 42? Uh, so, yes, 42. Um, so about 33% of those are limited companies. Um, we do about half of those we do for self-assessment. Um, we've actually got 16% payroll only clients. And um, only 7% would actually just be sole traders or partnerships that we don't do anything year end for. So. That's just a very quick overview. Actually, we've got one client as well that we do MPD VAT for because they don't know how to file it themselves. <laughs> oh, and that's all you so, do is the VAT. Yeah, yeah. And and one charity as well, Miss Lynn, sorry. So yeah. So mm. that's a quick so thirty three percent of them are limited. And did you say half yeah. of all of your clients you do self assessment? Yeah. Tax returns for. And do you do yeah. like you do corporation tax and accounts filing and stuff like that? Yeah, I have an accountant that works with me and does all that side of things. So uh, I don't personally do it, but <laughs> when oh. I'm on night. <laughs> but yeah, my accountant uh, colleague does a lot of that for me. And uh, so in terms of the time that we spend on various things, obviously we spend a lot more time with the day-to-day -day bookkeeping. So the percentages don't work out in terms of time spent, but uh, in terms of the client ratio, I guess, is the way to put it. Oh, that's very interesting. Do you think you would, are you interested in, in taking more qualifications and doing all of it yourself? Yes, I have my books ready, but um, I thought I was going to start this year. That was my goal, but obviously this happened and things have just gone berserk and we've just been probably working harder than we ever have been. And I've actually just moved back into my office this week, but I've been working from home and probably worked a lot harder than I do when I'm in the office. So uh, because you sort of just walk down the stairs and your desk is there and you just sort of get started at seven o'clock in the morning when you get up and have your breakfast at your desk and you just carry on. And because there was so much to do with the furlough claims and everything else, it just, yeah, it's been, uh, been mad, shall we say. So I haven't had time to study, but that is still my goal, but I might have to shift it to next year. <laughs> wow. I thought I was a bit of a workaholic, but I don't have breakfast at my desk. Sylvia, does any of this resonate with you? Have you been having breakfast at the desk? I know that you brought on new clients as well. Can you tell us about... How's it been for you in lockdown? And what's oh, it been for me? It's been absolutely manic, I have to say. Um, and so uh, obviously we've got a bunch of staff and they've all been working from home, which has been interesting. Stacia Bless has been in the office and um, she, um, so that's been, uh, she's been keep holding the fort as far as the phone goes, but we've got all sorts of apps and things and phone apps and stuff so that we can transfer the phone calls when we need to. Um, and um, yeah. So um, that's been it's been manic. Um, we've I, we are bringing on lots of new clients at the moment. We seem to be quoting for stuff new left, right, and centre, which is quite exciting, I have to say. We're doing a lot of marketing as well recently. We're having a real marketing push. So I'm I'm kind of um, thinking I might need somebody else soon. <laughs> um, wow! How many how many people have you got at the moment? Uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five of us as um, a six six employed including myself and Neil and three subcontractors two of whom are other branch chairs <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. one of whom is from another organization <laughs> that's a different organization <laughs> can't mention, can't mention. Wow, so there's loads of you how many people do you have in your practice Nicola um currently there's three of us so wow and my assistant and um, my accountant colleague as well 
Wow. So how long do you, can you also tell me how long your practice has been up and running? At what point did you take on your first person? So I started um, doing a little bit of bookkeeping on my dining room table in about 2002 uh, with no qualifications whatsoever. Never even occurred to me I needed a qualification. <laughs> um, and it was only when a client said to me one time, well, what qualifications have you got? And I said, none, I just use QuickBooks. And um, so he went away and I thought, well, maybe I'd better get some qualifications. And that's when I started. Um, so that must have been, well, June could probably tell you. It was about 2007, I think I got my um, level two or level one. It might even have been back then. Um, yeah. And I think I got, a, I don't know when I got a practice license. It's been, it was before, it was around about then. June would pop up and say, she looks on her finger. I know exactly when it was. <laughs> um, June can't um, be kind of everyone's brain at this point. Remember June, that June is everybody's brain. <laughs> um, and but then, so then, um, when Philip went to school or to secondary school, just before he went to secondary school, I, t I had started doing. A, I started training up Elisa um, and using her sort of as a subcontractor at that point with neither of us realizing that we should have had a practice license. <laughs> so, um, and then when I had, then about 2013, I moved into an office, took on a, an employee as a sort of office manager for sort of very part time. Elisa kept coming in and working for me. She did have a practice license by then. Um, and then I, I persuaded her to come on the payroll. And it was just a one, one second. <laughs> One second. Um, so, well, Nicola, um, so we've heard that Sylvia is, has been on, using QuickBooks since 2002. Obviously, Zero wasn't around in 2002. So, um, when did you first come across Zero, and how long did it take to sort of make, make the move to, start, to starting to use it? Um, well, probably you came across it at Summit, actually. Probably, uh, was probably the first time, really. Um, I have to say, actually, I know I'm supposed to be a Chihiro for, for Zero, but I didn't like it to start with. <laughs> oh. So uh, I think that's a, a thing that sometimes you have to give software a go and give it a try and, and actually persevere with it. So initially, I didn't like it. And that was partly because of Summit and how they came across. We probably all know what I'm talking about. Um, but they, um, but I started using it because other clients were using it and I sort of had to because I got clients that were using it already and actually then I really started to like it and actually saw the value in the product and, and I was using a different software at the time and eventually just sort of switched all my clients over um, from that previous one onto zero. So I'm now a fully fledged zero certified advisor. That's their training they do. So that's when you get your t-shirt, you, that's <laughs> training. <laughs> Beautiful mm. t-shirt that I've never worn, but uh, <laughs> looks great. Just like looks great in the background. Just as I like, wish you know, I brought my train because I, I I train for QuickBooks, so I got and I haven't got my trainer. I've got, I've got a trainer t-shirt, I've got a trainer sweatshirt, I've got a trainer hoodie, I've got trainer everything. And um, yeah, so you're there's not that many of you, are there, Sylvia? So am I right in thinking you're one of twelve? Uh, I don't know training. how many of us. There's about yeah. 12, 12 or thirteen of us. Yes, there's not uh, there's not that many of us. Um, so we could ask you literally anything about QuickBooks, <laughs> and you'd know the answer. <laughs> Try. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, I, well, I must admit, the training you go through a script. You know, these are the things I have to cover in this training mm. today. Um, but yeah. So zero obviously was was um, sort of online straight away. It was always an online package, and it kind of, I think it probably won kind of hearts and minds based on the fact that it was you know new to the group whereas QuickBooks obviously um, has been around for a long time uh, and it's got obviously QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online so what kind of spit are you have you got clients using both and do you use no nobody in desktop anymore I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't had anybody on desktop and, and QuickBooks doesn't doesn't promote desktop at, at all at the moment huh? it's kind of I mean you can get it if you push it <laughs> you know, if you really push your push it but um so although I did start off, well, I started using Quicken in about mm. 1992 to do my own books, um, my own, as I was working as a sole trader overseas and that, so I used Quicken then mm. and that was kind of how I got into it. So I have been, I have been a QuickBooks or Intuit fan for many years. I learned my bookkeeping on QuickBooks and um, and wow. it was about the same time that Zero came out, sort of uh, that I had switched everybody over. So sort of twenty thirteen ish, 
was when um, when they started pushing zero, which is uh, and QuickBooks, and I signed up for both at the time. But because I with it was so easy to switch everybody on QuickBooks that I kind of went the QuickBooks route and didn't. And we've stuck to QuickBooks um, until the last six months when we've started saying, okay, maybe we'll take some zero clients. <laughs> really? Um, really? So, you, out of the people who, have, out of clients who approach you, mm -hmm. if they're already using their own software, what, which are the, the most popular softwares? Oh, we just switch them. You do? We switch everybody to QuickBooks. So they, well, that's been our model is we've just said, no, we're not going to do anything. We're, we're not going to take on a client unless they're prepared to switch to QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and if they want, they want to stick with zero, we refer them on to somebody else. And I mean, in, and Sage, nobody wants to stay with Sage. So, um, I do have a QuickBooks mug, however. And is it a lot more? I mean, so Nicola, do you allow other software products? Yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, I'm literally on a Sage desktop all day on a Wednesday, so that's what I'm halfway through today. So yeah, I'm on a green Sage desktop. Um, also, I've got one on QuickBooks. Um, I think that's it at the moment. But yeah, we do. Oh, Sage Online as well, we do a little bit of. So yeah, we do allow a few in, but, but rare. But I think, I think the thing is, and it's, and it's like Sylvia said, you can, you can get the model where you switch everybody or you can just sort of see what is right for the client. And sometimes the, the Sage client I'm on today, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's be a huge job to switch them to anything because the nature of the industry they're in and the, the amount of use yeah. that they need, it would be a huge task to try and switch them to anything. So sometimes well, I it's think that's just the, to carry on. Yeah, that's the thing. So that's why I've just basically, I've referred them on to other people. If they want to stick with the software they've got, I've just said, well, I don't, you know, you probably need to work with somebody else. Um, because we do some year end stuff, uh, quite a bit of year end stuff as well, um, with my um, other hat on. <laughs> green the green one that's up there um, so um we do some people we just do do, do year end for but and they may be using other softwares and that's fine because we can do that straight from tvs but um but in general if people want bookkeeping we switch them um I, except that i've now started taking on some zero um clients and i've got one client who's been after me to switch her to zero for a long time and i've finally given in mm. Mainly because I've got some subcontractors who are great zero fans. Oh, that's handy. Shout out for Lucy Brown and Kirsty Young. Kirsty St. John. Sorry, <laughs> not Kirsty Young. That's that's Other business. branch chairs also on yes. the advisory council. <laughs> Big shout out. That's not a bad idea. So if you must put up with these alternative software packages, I suppose you could just find a handy um, subcontractor who likes to use them. Um, right, let's talk about features. So, um, <laughs> Nicola Payne, I saw that face then. Uh, do you, so I know that the big news to me is that Zero has just released its tax um, add-on and they did talk about it, I think, quite a few Zero cons ago. So I, sort of how interesting is that and are you thinking of using it yourself or getting your accountant to use it? Um, yes, it's very interesting. Um, it's been in beta testing, I think, for quite a while now. So I didn't get involved with that at the time, but it is now live as far as I'm aware. And I think as a part of the partner program, you get that anyway. So I don't think there's any additional fees to that. Um, I think if the client goes direct to themselves, I'm not entirely sure on that one. I'd have to check that out. Um, but I think as a partner program, um, I think we get that included. We also get what they call working papers. So you can transfer things straight from zero into your working papers to all your fiddly bits that the accountants do and then <laughs> push it through to zero tax and then you have your end um, things to file uh, that way. Um, so yes, it is very exciting. I know they're trying to make it a one-stop shop that uh, we can do everything within zero which makes sense and I think a lot of the softwares are doing that I think um, last week meant was meant and Sage does the same sort of thing so I think it's you know it's, it's what they're all sort of doing to make it as easy as possible and certainly with MTD for self-assessments not that far away really you know in real terms yeah April uh, 2023 is that right yeah oh, is that the I final day? So. I was, somebody was asking me this morning and I couldn't remember when it was yeah I think we're covering that in the newsletter which is coming out on Friday by the way, cool. oh, it's, I was like, what's it's a um, income, income tax for self-assessment. You will know this, no doubt, but I was like, what is this? <laughs> um, not as exciting as it sounded initially. Um, so uh, Nicola, do you use, uh, I know that um, Zero obviously uh, kind of bought HubDoc, didn't they? Which is a kind of capture 
uh, sort of uh, add-on. Do you use, yeah. what do you use for that, the kind of receipt capture? Do you use anything like that? Yes, yes we do. So we started, or I started off years and years ago on the orange one and then I switched to um, auto entry, which I love. Um, I, I have started say orange, using... in orange is, let's stop talking in colour codes. Orange, <laughs> it's fine. Okay. We can receipt all have bank. our own opinions. Um, okay, orange I did start using bank. receipt bank, yes. And um, I think again at Summit I bumped into uh, our good friends at uh, auto entry and I switched to them because financially it made way better sense mm -hmm. um, and I stuck with them. I do believe Receipt Bank have, have changed their pricing structure so I do believe that is a much better option as well now it's more comparable like that so you know but HubDoc um, was bought by Zero last year-ish mm. and um, it is now free um, as part of the partner program for our clients so that's quite good although there is a couple of features that it doesn't do quite so well so I depending on the nature of the client and how much volume I'm putting through I decide which one to use for that sort of thing it doesn't uh -huh. really deal with duplicates very well so if you scan something twice it doesn't pick it up which is a feature that zero if you're listening you need to sort now <laughs> <laughs> So, like, how good are clients generally at scanning things and sending you everything that you need? Does this kind of capture, all this capture technology, does it make it easier, do you think, Sylvia? It, it makes, oh, sorry, go on. Or Nicola, uh, go for Nicola. Yeah, I, yes and no is the answer. Yes, mm -hmm. if they use it, and no, if they don't. So if we've got a client who's particularly bad, then we just say, just just send us the stuff, we'll do it. We'll do the scan, you know, we'll do it as a scan. And we like to have the scans done anyway, even if they haven't done it, um, because it means that it's all, you know, those transactions are all attached in, in the software, which mm. is it's obviously uh, um, a good thing. Um, but, um, but some clients are really good at it and some clients are really bad at it. And um, if you're trying to keep up to date with things, but we work um, exclusively remotely with our clients. Um, mm. So we have to rely on them produce, either getting the stuff to us or doing the scanning. And that isn't, it's not, it, it, it has its moments, <laughs> let's put it that way. Mm. Um, with, with, uh, if Lucy's listening, I don't think she is, but um, we have one particular client that she helps me with that is um, particularly bad. <laughs> it's a hand holding. Nicola, were you going to add, do you have anything to add to that? Have you found a kind of solution? Um, well, initially I started off and it was an in-house process, so I didn't make the clients do anything because, and I think partly they still want that facility of dropping a big bag full of paperwork to you and they don't want to do anything. So we still offer that as, as a service and I still, my letterbox is still round full of papers quite regularly. So that's absolutely fine. Or a lot of people will just forward their emails across if they've had invoices on their emails. So I, I, it's up to them really if they, if they want to get involved in it. And I and that's fine but the ones that you know have got a lot of volume sometimes it's just easier to just to get the files of papers and, and do it yourself and you can monitor it better and it's, it was more for an efficiency within the practice that I started doing it rather than uh, manually typing things and actually a lot of the online softwares to actually manually type in as we used to back in the sage days where you could batch invoice it's not that easy on the online software. It's a lot, it's a slower process because of the nature of the fact you're online and it takes mm. a little while to catch up depending on your broadband speed. Yeah, and that is it. a big thing with all these online things is the, is the yeah. quality of yeah. the Wi-Fi, quality of the internet connection. Yeah. yeah, so actually using a receipt bank or an auto entry or something like that actually enables you to get the, the documents and the, obviously you get the PDF source documents there in the software as well. But also it's the speed to actually get them in there so you can get a whole batch going in straight away once you've processed them within auto entry or obviously bank or a duck or whoever else you're using and you can just chuck them all in and and you've not had to sit there and manually type it and wait for your internet to catch up you just do a batch let it get on with it and then come back once you've made your cup of tea and then you can start mm. processing the bank rec and things like that so yeah mm. sylvia do you know anything about the um because i know that quickbooks just has released its own capture yeah. software and um, do you use that or are you kind of stuck to we, your um we we do we start we're starting to use it um mm -hmm. because uh, the main reason being that we said we had hundreds of in fact i had several thousand outstanding unused uh, auto entry credits um oh. and, uh, 
because I forgot to, the, the, the thing I love about Auto Entry is that you can actually up and down your, your subscription at any time and change the, about the number of credits you're getting. Um, but I'd ended up, I forgot to change mine back here. So you can kind of up it, get an extra more credits than you would normally and then put it down again. And, um, and I forgot to put it down again. So I ended up with several thousand unused credits. So I'm, I'm still trying to use it. So, um, we also started officially using the, the orange one. <laughs> But um, <laughs> QuickBooks, yeah, so QuickBooks Receipt Capture is, uh, it, when it came out, I mean, it, with all these things, when they first start, they're, they're a bit clunky, but it's now much better and it's got, you can now put the bills in as well. Um, the other thing that I like about, uh, that with, the, with the QuickBooks Capture thing is not so much the capture, but actually you can import from a CSV file all your, you can import all the bills as a, you know, if you've got, want to do a batch entry and you've got a whole list, particularly if somebody's not using um, if then they're, they're using a different software or something, or they're using mm -hmm. something that isn't compatible with QuickBooks, it doesn't link with QuickBooks. So you can download a whole load of bills from another piece of software onto a, onto a spreadsheet and, and import those that way using their import function. Um, bills and, and sales things and credit notes, I think, as well now, um, as well as sort of standard lists of customers and suppliers and things. So it, there's lots of ways of getting your, your data into QuickBooks. And they're developing all the time. And it used to be that you could only sit there and type it in and type kind of thing. Mm. Um, so, but also with the bank linking, but I mean, I know Zero has all the bank linking and things as well. Mm. Richard Young has actually just asked a question um, on whether Zero uh, was saying that Zero has a mail in function and is wondering whether Nicholas used that. Does, does that, is that yeah. what it sounds like? Yes, it's basically just a mailbox. So you have an email address with each zero license. And if you want to then just email the files in, you can then attach them to transactions from that inbox as such, or just file them within the inbox to, to store yeah. them there if you want. So there is a storage function anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you can do work. that with QuickBooks as well. It's a site, it works slightly differently, but it, I mean, effectively mm -hmm. it's the same thing. <clears throat> you, can email, you can email in your um, receipts and um, receipts and bills um, to do the capture thing. So Sarah White, let's um, look at this question from Sarah Wright, um, White, sorry. Um, so she, she says she's a QuickBooks fan and she loves it. And the thing that put her off about zero is that it doesn't have a bank reconciliation process. Yeah, yeah, I'm so with you on that. So with you on that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, concern it's, just, <clears throat> it's just very different. It, is, it does take a bit of getting used to, but it, it definitely has, it's basically line by line. So you don't take a, the old fashioned method and do a month at a time or a week at a time. Well, I want to do that though. I, I absolutely just want to do line, that. Just a line at a time. Yes, but then you, when do you ever have a, a, a point at which you can say, print off, this is my bank record. I've now reconciled this to this bank statement yes. and I've got yes, a number at the a, end of it. Yeah, there's a bank reconciliation report in the reports function. Yes, so you can. You can do that. Does it allow for changes, any changes to come through to the next reconciliation? So with, with QuickBooks, if you Absolutely. reconcile and you've got some things that didn't reconcile, you can easily change, you know, you run a bank, you can do all your bank matching, which is what I understand Zero does as a, and calls it the bank rec, you kind of match everything through. But then the things that you might have manually typed in don't show up on a bank, on a, on a bank matching because you might have typed them in and they might be twice them or whatever. Whereas if you run a complete bank reconciliation in QuickBooks, you can say, right, this is the total at the end of this statement or the end of this week or, the, uh, or, or even the end of the day if you've got a lot of stuff. Um, and then if things are, are there to reconcile, you can, you can quickly change them um, or you can leave them and they might show up on the next day because they might simply not have cleared at that point. And, and that's, mm. that has always been the biggest, uh, biggest feature for me, QuickBooks, as, as opposed to, um, to, to Zero. So that's a kind of workflow thing. So you can, you can do the same thing, but the workflow has got to be slightly different. Richard Young is just saying, yeah, you can do the bank rec at any time. Um, and it also shows you the bank statement, it's downloaded, so you can check against that. Is that something you use, Nicola? Well, I always check um, my, when I get a physical bank statement from a client or downloaded or however you get them, I always check that that matches the bank fee that it's pulled in because you're working with technology and there's always going to be the odd blip now and again. It might duplicate a line or it might miss a line for whatever reason and it, it is just what it is. I think they're all pretty much the same. But it's, it's a case of you, you know where to go and, and in Zero there's, there's a few different tabs in the bank 
account page so you know which one is your bank feed and you check that the balance is correct as per your bank statement so you know the bank feed is correct and then if you reconcile everything to your bank feed you're sorted you print your bank reconciliation report off you've done it any corrections you need to make you shouldn't have to at that point because you've already reconciled it to the correct amount so it's only if you've misposted it or something you have to make a correction the amount should all be correct because you've already matched it to what the bank feed is saying already Yes, it's when you've got things in there that when people are doing some manual stuff, particularly if your client's doing their own bookkeeping, um, and yes. they put in manual things and it's gone in as a, and then you found it's gone in from auto entry and it's gone in manually. And yes. um, uh, so, and, and you can find things that are, are, are duplicated and things and they don't match what's gone through the bank. So, you, and then you, hmm. you know, so there are things like that that I, are really easy to pick up using the QuickBooks um, bank reconciliation feature. Um, and I mean, I, to be honest, I, <laughs> I haven't used zero really. I've, I've, I've looked at it more recently because we've started offering it to people, but I don't use it day to day. So, um, I'm picking up on what other people have said to me about zero in the past. Yeah. So, you know, and all these things evolve. Um, so. Yeah, I think, I think that that's what you say. The problem comes when you've got clients trying to help and doing it and thinking <laughs> they're doing the right thing. So uh, my philosophy is you don't let them help. <laughs> you just you just ban them. <laughs> Give them read only access. <laughs> Unless, you know, you can, yeah, but I mean, you know, often I, I did have that with a client that they were matching up when they made a payment, that sort of thing, or a sales of coming, that sort of thing, they were matching up invoices. And sometimes it didn't quite match what actually came in the bank. But it, if you know where you're looking, it's very easy to spot them and then just think, oh, okay, I can see what's happened. And you just make that correct. Yeah. Yeah, the individual matching transactions, are, uh, you know, that's not so much. It's just when you've got duplicate things in there. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, Kirsty, you're saying, John, who you mentioned before, said, yeah, you can just go to the bank statement and mark as reconciled, just like in QuickBooks when there isn't a feed. So says Kirsty St. John, but um, oh, yes. <laughs> and Matt, Matt is finding this all very interesting because he's just at the start of his zero training. So that's interesting, oh, smiley face. Well, good luck, Matt. I hope it all goes all right. I hope you made the right decision about your software. Um, Mina Patel is in the process of switching from Sage 950 to either QuickBooks or Zero. Uh, we can make this decision for her today, I'm sure. Um, do, any of you give a, ooh, do any of you give a demonstration of the software? We could maybe do that. Both yes, of you. No problem. <laughs> Fantastic. I think, I think with all of them, you, you sign up for the trial, you get a demo company anyway. I think it's probably the same. Yeah, there is, exactly. And all, and all the rest of them. So you can have a play to your heart's content yeah. um, when you sign up. And you don't pay for most of the partner accounts, I don't think, with any of them. So, you know, you get that free trial and free demo account that you can just play around with to see. Yeah, so we use our demo account to run our practice. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see with Zira you get your own free account for your practice and a demo account. Well you get, you you know? get a free <laughs> account for your practice but you also get and you get the sample company which is um, you know you can play in but it doesn't stay there whatever you've done doesn't stay there. The same sort of thing. Are they roughly the same price? Do you know? Well. I'm saying that because I think they are but I haven't you know I it changes. If I buy it directly they probably are but I think for that because that was another reason I remember having it I think Somebody put me on a table with the zero guys at, at, at the summit one time, which was which was interesting. Um, and uh, it was the pricing thing, and she was so rude about it. You know, sort of, well, if you don't want to pay for it, then you can't have it. And I thought, well, that's fine. I don't want to pay for it. I'm not going to have it. But um, it was it was the pricing thing then. Now I did, I'm, I'm sure it's changed, but um, <laughs> because they must have caught up. Um, but I know with QuickBooks. Um, if you as if you pay for it, it doesn't matter how many clients you've got as soon as you are have an account and copy which is free um, it doesn't matter how many clients you've added you have um if you pay for their, their subscription then it's it's half price or you know forever um if you set it up and your client pays for it then they get a half they get it half price for um six months or something and there's always a, quick, oh. a month's free trial that's um, interesting. Okay, so effectively, it's half price compared to what that client would get on the yes. if they just went themselves. Yeah. Do they have a kind? So, I with zero, they have this whole. You're like a silver partner and you're a gold partner. And does that all depend on how many clients you've got? It does and, with QuickBooks. It doesn't affect what you pay for their soft for the software uh -huh. um, for the client files. And, and I think 
sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering if that was the same with zero. Is that like an incentive basically to bring yeah. more clients on? Yeah, you get you get points per client that you have the subscription for. You also get points when you get invited into their account. So there's varying levels of points for that. You also get additional points if you use HubDoc and if you use expenses and da, 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 all these extra things. You get extra points for to bump your level up. Um, and you, when you also do the training and if you keep your um, certification uh, on, on track, then you get extra points for that each year as well. And you're a champion silver partner. Woohoo! Um, so you, you maintain that champion status, which I think it, it gets you more perks on the directory, things like that. So I have had clients find me from the directory. So all those things do give you perks within people actually finding you as a, a bookkeeper and accountant practice through through zero. So. And does it make the licenses cheaper? Uh, yeah, the more you get, the more discount you get as the subscriber, as the bookkeeper or accountant. Yes, but I mean, also as the, the partner, I mean, Zero's the cheapest is at £2 a month for the very, very basic, but that's only for oh, a right. partner. And it goes up to the premium one being a standard £30 a month. Um, but then there's all the extras add on if you need them, but you don't pay for those unless you, you want or need them. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the ledger, the pricing plans for the partner accounts, the ledger ones are... So basically you're very small companies that you would normally own a spreadsheet maybe, but they don't really want to, I mean, they do, they can have access to them if they want, but it is basically a really small clients. You can have a non VAT cash book and a, a VAT cash book. So you can do VAT returns through that as well. And that's nine pound a month at the moment. So there's, there's, there's such an array of products within zero that you can, fit, yeah. you can tailor yes. it to your clients as to what they need. I mean, Often we get uh, bundles of licenses for next to nothing, and then you can just put all them on and then get the full whack. And then after that period of time, when I have to start paying full price for them again, then or my price, then um, you can set them to the level that they actually need and require. So you, you're not paying through the through the earth. You're not, you know, they're not passing the cost on to them, which they don't actually need. So you can choose which level is best for them. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much the same in QuickBooks, and uh, we for the most part don't pass on the cost of the software we just wrap it up in our monthly fees anyway because um, otherwise it's just a bit too complicated to work it out <laughs> it mm. different and everybody needs something different but we, we get a lot of bundles as well of pricing um, pricing things um, um, I was just gonna say Kevin Jarvis uh, is reaching us via Facebook and he says they much prefer zero to QuickBooks um, and they say if the client isn't fast, then we tend to move them to zero. Um, but just says that he doesn't believe in forcing people to use, uh, forcing clients to use one software over another. So, you know, go with the preferred choice if, if it's okay. Um, but says, do you save a lot of time by using QuickBooks over zero? Question. Um, and then so it just it does say that he does wince when the client com comes to him saying that they, uh, they use Sage. <laughs> I don't know. It was, do I save a lot of time by using QB over zero? I don't know because I don't, don't use zero. <laughs> no idea. Um, I don't as he says, is it really necessary to refer clients to someone else just because they prefer something different? Well, that's only because that's been our model. We decided we were going to be a QuickBooks only practice for, for years. And um, it's only as we've grown more that, and we, you know, we've been, we've got plenty of work and we've grown and grown and I'm quite happy to refer it to somebody else. There's plenty of work going out there. I'm not, um, you know, I, so from that point of view, it's just been my preference. It's, you know, I'm not saying this is the way you have to go, Kevin. Mm. And you didn't tell us about your practice. What, 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 is, what is the state of your practice? You said you've got six people. Six, uh, six employees and three subcontractors. Um, mm -hmm. I've got, we've got, um, well, we've just done our, um, practice what do you call that thing for the aml risk risk, uh, risk, 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 risk yeah risk. annually you do an assessment a risk yeah. assessment your own practice now yeah. don't you yeah. yeah so we've just been through that yesterday and i think we've got a, about i think we've got 40 ish self-assessment clients some of whom are the directors of some of our limited companies for whom we do um, the bookkeeping and one or two for whom we just do the year end um Mostly we do book, full bookkeeping in year end. We, we offer a sort of end to end um, for probably the majority of our um, our company clients. Um, yeah. Um, and, and how many clients ish in total? Yeah, so in total, just shy of 100, I think, or sort of between around 90 to 100, something like that. I'm, I'm, 
that sounds about right. But, um, and, and when you get yeah. to a practice of six people, um, yeah. do you still, or however many it was, um, do, do you still, have you spoken to each of your clients? Do you have regular contact yourself as the practice? Um, in theory, <laughs> but it's been so busy lately. I, I mean, I do in my head have a plan and a tick list of bringing everybody at least once a year and sort of having a conversation preferably more often than that but but the girls have got in um you know they're interacting all the time with the clients and um and so they are I, i'm less involved with the majority of our clients now than i once was it, it, it's true and there's some of our clients that probably don't really know who i am <laughs> necessarily um and presumably that's quite difficult in the beginning because your clients are, want you but then yes you know the further down that track you get uh, it, it, yes so uh, i still do i still do the, the sales bit i'm still um, you know sign the sign the deal kind of thing um mm. and then you know but that was make it clear that they will have a, a dedicated bookkeeper but it would not necessarily be me um, but i do the year end stuff because it's well, I have just recently taken on somebody who is also a chartered accountant. So um, I am or not is also a chartered, who is a chartered accountant, which I am not, um, who, uh, so I do now have somebody else who can do uh, the final, final accounts and things, which I haven't had before. She's another of the QuickBooks trainers. She, she was coming off maternity leave and muttering about starting her own practice and with, well, how was she going to do? And I said, it work for me. Oh, you scooped her up. I scooped her up. It was a very, very good, good move. Um, I love that. So, Nicola, in terms of your practice, um, are you, what sort of next on the horizon? Are you kind of looking to expand the number of clients or add more services to the clients you've got or sort of keeping happy where it is right now? Got enough on your plate? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think overall the goal will be to, to be grow, growing and um, we are advertising it as normal through all our social media and magazines and whatever else we do mm, you so, do loads of social media don't you yeah we do we do we do try <laughs> so uh, i think it's just it's getting your name known and, and your area and things like that is really important and so yeah the goal is to grow and i think it's a case it's kind of what comes first the, the new clients the extra work or the new people the new subcontractors or the new employees and it's kind of it's that juggling and getting it right so it's uh so we're okay at the level we're at at the moment, but I think if we have more and more clients appearing or need more time, things like that, then that's when we need more staff to put to work. So it's, yeah, it's that, it's that sort of tipping point, isn't it? And I mm. want to pick Sylvia's brains as to how she did that <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, somebody has asked, and sorry, we, I think some of our audio is kind of going in and out because you know, it's too hot even for broadband right now. So sorry about that if you're finding it difficult to hear us. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so Sarah White again has just asked the question of how do you actually manage subcontractors and says unfortunately once they, uh, she took on a, a one once and they ran off with the customer. Oh, well, that's really bad luck. I've, I've got very um, honest subcontractors. They're all ICB members. So. <laughs> well, that's a good starting um, point, I would say. Well, it is a good starting point, yes. Um, yeah, so um, I've, I've been through different ones. So I had one who was the, the only time I ever did something that wasn't, that was odd was a, a, somebody wanted to stay on clear books and I took on a subcontractor and she basically ran that client. And, but I, I don't know, I made a hundred pounds a month on it or something, but um, she had the majority of the income on it and just gave me a bit of a tick over. And um, so that, that worked fine. She, she worked with that one particular client only. Um, and my others, I make them part of the team very much, not part of the team. Um, we have a team meeting once a week since um, we've been on, on Zoom all the time. And they're all over the country. So, I mean, you know, I'm in Buckinghamshire, Lucy's in Lincoln, and Kirsty's in Peterborough. Um, and one of my staff members now is down in Devon. So, um, it's, uh, you know, we have them, we're all over the place. And it's, it, uh, with, you know, working with online software, it's really easy. But I do have a subcontractor agreement. Um, I can't remember if it was an ICB one or an AAT one, but I have a subcontract agreement. It states it sets out what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do, and it does have it does have a clause in there about nicking the clients, yeah. similar to a to an employee's agreement, you know, to an employee's contract. Um, that you can do nothing if I mean that's another thing about working remotely is the client is not on site. If the bookkeeper is not on site, they don't build up quite the same relationship, and um, 
as they would if you're, you know, when you're really working remotely. Um, if you're on site, you know, the relation is very much with the person who's there, whereas if you're working remotely, there's a bit more of a team behind it. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and we use a county manager to kind of manage the, the workflow and manage the, the team and manage the clients and make sure that we automate all our requests for paperwork and things through. You can do it through QuickBooks. There is a, a workflow option on the QuickBooks accountant. Uh, it's called Work, I think. Just, and you can set up templates and models and things for doing things. Um, and automating stuff, but I mean, we tend to do it through a county manager just to keep it all in one place. Um, but mm, yeah, I think that's rather unfortunate, Sarah, if you had somebody who ran off with the client. Um, yeah, I haven't yeah. had that experience. Get in touch with ICB, we can sort you out with a subcontractor agreement. I don't think there's one on the website, so give us, you know, send us an email. Um, so uh, yeah, okay, so I was just, um, so somebody said Usher has, uh, mentioned um why so anti-sage i've been using it since 1997 um, and actually we did do the sage the free agent last week and i think sage actually did very well we had lots of people on the chat saying sage is great particularly sage's new um sage business cloud business cloud accounting or whatever it's called um, sage accounting apart from its name um so what they what that usher is saying is um it is quite expensive and it yeah. would be to do a kind of bit of a comparison with pricing for zero and i've used quickbooks and zero and haven't enjoyed either and i also use exchequer and i'm just wondering though do you think maybe because obviously kevin jarvis kind of alluded to this um from, from his facebook message do you tend to find that there's perhaps a different type of client that is using quickbooks online or zero versus the type of client that's using sage is it maybe a sort of um you know different type yeah different type of client nicola do you fi find that yeah, yeah, possibly. I mean, the first time sort of I used it properly was with a, with a client a few years back now that they were very much technology minded in the first place. So the, their whole ethos of their whole company was they wanted to do everything. Everything was an app. Everything was this. Everything. So mm. they were fitting very well with their sort of ethos of their company, whereas some of the, I don't know, so maybe manufacturing companies and have been on Sage for donkey's years, they're unlikely to change because Sage does what they needed to do. And Sage desktop, I mean, you know, and certainly when they've got probably five, 10 people all on Sage you know, all throughout the day doing what they need to do. I mean, you'd be hard pushed to find an online software that could manage that so so well as Sage does. So I'm not putting Sage down. I just think it's in the right context of, of the right client. And yeah, I think a lot of these young people just go straight onto on, online stuff, don't they? They see these, yeah. um, they want the what's ever been advertised. I mean, QuickBooks did very well recently because they had a lot of TV adverts, which, which used to drive me a bit mad, really, because they kept saying it was one click and there's your self-assessment done. I'm thinking, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> there's quite a lot of, I wouldn't say false advertising, perhaps misleading advertising, particularly around making tax digital. Oh, with, yeah, no, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Makes it all look very simple. It does make it look very simple, and I don't think it actually is. I think in in quite the yeah. same way that, for goodness sake, make sure that nobody from QuickBooks Trainer team is actually listening to this <laughs> this broadcast. You'll um, be in trouble. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> I will be in trouble. Um, yeah, it, I, I agree that there's it's not and it's not false advertising, but it is. I think it, some of that is a bit misleading, and I sit there and I cringe when I watch it because it. It can. The thing is that it's aimed at your sole trader. Your, your, and it's those adverts are aimed at a sole trader. You know, your builder sitting on the sofa and thinks, oh, I could do that. I can do that. And he gets out his thing and he starts and downloads it onto his phone and he works with it on his phone. And it, 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 it works for if, the, if they are a one man band with no back and no, um, and no bills to, to enter. They're just doing everything from the bank and it's really easy. They haven't got. It's easy if they're using their own bank account to run their business, which makes all of us cringe um, because they, they, it can, you know, brings in the bank and you can easily swipe left or right as to whether it's a business expense or not. And so from that point of view, mm -hmm. it can be quite nice. And it does put, it codes stuff only into the, um, the lines on the self-assessment tax return for the, uh, the self-employed pages. So um, from that point of view, it, it, it could be, it can be really easy. Um, uh, what we've found is that people have done it and then come to us and said, can you help? Which is fine. We don't mind that. That's, you know, all, all the better. And I notice actually that Zero and Sage, I mean, I, I often on ITV3, so I get Zero and Sage and QuickBooks all, you know, uh, 
all advertising on the same um, the same programs. I'm now confessing to watching m m hundreds of copies of Midsummer Murders and. <laughs> I'm sure we've got lots of members who watch that as well. Um, so, quick one, um, just to go sort of back to the sort of package that you use. Um, Richard Young has asked you, Nicola, if you have any clients on a Zero Bureau subscription. You know what Zero that is? Bureau, no, what do you mean by that? Does he mean payroll or does he mean. What do you mean by that, Richard? I'm um, not sure. You would segue into payroll, though. Are you both doing payroll? And yes. if so, bless you. And um, are you okay? <laughs> Any further claims to go yet, I'm sure, but <laughs> we might need therapy by October. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Elisa does all our payroll, so I don't actually have, um, I don't actually have a lot uh, to do with it. I just offer tea and sympathy. Tea. Um, are you doing, are you using QuickBooks for payroll? No. Mm. What do you use? other than bright pay. Bright so, pay. Bright pay. Bright pay. And I'll say that loud. I think uh, um, I think QuickBooks, the, the newer versions of QuickBooks payroll are probably quite good, but they, the original ones weren't. And um, so we started using bright pay. And, and it's again, it's like we use tax count, not tax filer, because it's, you know, we've got all the history on there. Why, why switch if something is working? Mm. You know, don't, don't kill it. And I think the same goes with things like Sage. Um, you know, if it's working and it's working well for the client and that's what they need, then then don't switch them off Sage. Use, keep using Sage. And the, the reason we switched everybody from desktop, QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online is so that I could access it remotely and initially um, because, mm. I don't know, I mean, some of you know I have epilepsy, so I can't, sometimes I go through phases where I can't drive because I've had a fit and everything's, you know, everything's gone to pot. And... Um, so, and I'll get a year or so where I'm not allowed to drive for a bit. And so I needed to be, find a model. That's why we went to this almost exclusively remote model for, um, for, for my practice right from the start. And um, why we found on QuickBooks Online was brilliant when we first switched across to it. Um, but I think, um, you know, if, it, if it's working for you, there's no reason to switch software if it's working. And I think going back to what Kevin um, was asking earlier, that's why I don't, you know, I would rather refer somebody on than make them switch software. If they don't care, well, I'll switch, I'll give them QuickBooks. You know, I've got all these free licenses. I can, I can give them a, um, a copy of QuickBooks. But um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> mm. So, Nicola, when did you, at what point in your journey then did you actually take up office premises? Um, so, that would have been about 2016, so four years ago. And what was the thinking behind that? Was that for, for working with your team or was that so that clients could come and see you or something else? Um, yeah, a mixture of both. Um, yeah, I was working out of my spare bedroom at the time. So, and at that point I was, I did have an employee and so it was getting more difficult to work from the house. And like you say, when you want to meet clients, having some sort of premises, I think is, is easier. Um, I had a great relationship with the, the, landlord of this building anyway so he was kind of nagging me anyway to, to take it on anyway so it's basically an upstairs sort of flat if you like so we do have bathroom and shower facilities if needed you know <laughs> and a little kitchenette type place but yeah I mean it, it, it suits it suits and having worked now since March at home I'm glad to be back actually because mm. I do like the the routine and I do like to to separate my work and my home life and I do find that easier if you're going somewhere else to work um, that's just my preference I mean a lot of people are quite happy working um, from home but I do find I, I do like to keep it separate and uh, that my husband is then free to play his music as loud as he needs to really. <laughs> oh is he playing like recorded music or is he making his own yes. music? oh no no record so he's into rock and roll so yeah we have a lot of rock and roll blasting from a proper system not just an old Hi-fi, a proper, proper system, records, oh. you know, plastic, big plastic things. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Leave them to it. Good idea. Yeah, um, so, um, so Richard Young has just clarified what he means by the bureau subscription mm -hmm. is when you have a client who's got multiple businesses and that apparently it makes it um, more cost effective and he suggests you ask your account manager. So you've been told. <laughs> Thank you. I will do. I will do that. 
straight away. The straight whole away. thing about the client with multiple <laughs> companies is an interesting one because at the moment there isn't a way of doing that in QuickBooks unless you sell them a, an accountant copy, which they're not supposed to have. <laughs> so, uh -huh. um, That's yeah. it. With it. Within Xero anyway, if they've got, they can use the same login to get into multiple companies. So if you've got a client, yeah, you can they, with don't have, they just have the same login and they can just switch quite easily. They don't have to re-log into the other one. They literally just switch back and forth. Yeah, you can do, you can do that with QuickBooks too, um, mm -hmm. but you're still paying for, for, you know, four separate licenses or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, depending on, on what they're doing, you can, um, you know, you can classify things within QuickBooks so that they can you can run the reports on different different levels. But I, I tend not to I tend to recommend to my clients not to do that with different businesses because it does make things more complex. I have um I have a a podiatrist or a podiatric surgeon actually um, who runs some private work and some NHS work um, and something else through his one QuickBooks business and we've managed to set it up so that it does actually we can actually send invoices from with different logos and addresses and things on um but it's not it's not ideal um, um i think what i'm learning is that you should really have a good relationship with your account manager and uh, try yes. and ask for deals basically as much as possible uh, um yeah. so yes we you both do payroll don't you do you use zero payroll nicola I do for a couple of clients, but I mainly use MoneySoft and I'll give a big shout out for MoneySoft because mm. I find that really easy to use, very straightforward. It is desktop based, um, but I do link it um, with different machines via Dropbox so we can access on different machines. Uh -huh. And BrightPay is desktop. Sorry, BrightPay is desktop based as well, I think, isn't it? But kind of- It can be cloud. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's desktop based to do the, to do the actual payroll input but there's a cloud connect version where the so it's an employer employee portal where they can pick up the the pay slips and things securely and stuff so um mm. it uh, you know that's quite nice but yeah thank you for that question frederick so i'd forgotten about zero payroll it's also it seems to me like what's quite cool is to use you know have get a software that you know has all of these add-ons and um, use them for some clients for the sort of more simple clients and then do you know consider using the um, you know, a different software mm. if you need to. So yeah, yeah. So there's MoneySoft. We're using BrightPay, um, AutoEntry. We've mentioned Receipt Bank, TaxFiler, and TaxCalc in the mix here. So mm. there's quite a lot of software. Accountancy manager. An accountancy manager. Yes, yeah, so we've got an accountancy manager <coughs> you coming out, um, possibly next month. So that would be in the newsletter. So you can find out more about right, that. I'll come and listen to that one. I use I use Zero's practice manager for my practice. Ah. Cash and how, much, all that. how much functionality have you got in that? Well, probably more than I use. I don't use it to its potential at all. So um, yeah, basically I use it for my database and all my notes and things about my clients and then sort of the workflow of what needs to be and when, that sort of thing. But I think the, the more we grow, the more I can use it to its full potential. But probably not can you do it. the um, Can you do the engagement letters and the AML and stuff through that? No, no, it doesn't do that. But you can store files and you can yeah. do all that sort of thing. Yeah. We tend to do all that through Accountancy Manager. Um, it used, used to do a lot of it in tax card, but we put a database type stuff, but it's easier in Accountancy Manager. And we can automate emails out to people to say, please send us all this information. But you can do it in QuickBooks directly. Um, and again, it's been a question of, it's because of the engagement, having one place where we could do the engagement letters and the um, and, and county manager links to a company's house and pulls in all the company's house data, so you don't have to go looking for it. Um, and you can do all your you know, pricing and everything in there. So that's kind of why we liked that. But um, the, the, the QuickBooks workflow, I think it's quite good. Um, we've used it a bit. I think Elisa's used it a bit. It's again, it's kind of, Courses for courses. Um, if mm. it ain't broken, the accountancy manager, then mm. keep it all in one place. It's, it's what we try to do, really. Actually, Faye did mention that practice ignition works well with zero, mm. apparently. So we've we've heard a lot from practice ignition recently. And um, she's mm. also asked another question, which, to be honest, I I don't really understand. So I might just email that to uh, Nicola and see if I can get an answer for you. It's a bit technical for my liking. Um, 
Frederick just asked about tax filer. So Nicola, you're using tax filer and Sylvia, you use tax calc, don't you? Um, so I just actually, just, just to kind of round up, I just wondered if we could very quickly touch on um, QuickBooks Live. Sylvia, I don't know if you know anything about it, but QuickBooks Live, which is launched in America, which is effectively QuickBooks's... Um, yes, let it stay in America. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a client using QuickBooks, you can, for us, like an additional monthly fee, and I think in America it's like 200 bucks or something, you get your software and also the services of a QuickBooks Pro Advisor. Um, and it's come under quite a lot of fire in America. I don't know if it's moving over here, um, but you know, it may well be the way of the world, software bundling in bookkeeping services. It, how do you, are you kind of threatened by that? Do you think? I it, don't feel threatened by it because there is no personal, um, there's no personal um, interaction whatsoever with that. It's, it's, it's like, you know, I could send a bundle of stuff over to India and it would get done a dance like quicker than I can, uh, cheaper than I can do it here. Mm. Um, but who in earth's doing it? And where, I mean, I'm assuming they've got some kind of, um, um, boundaries around it. I mean, we did actually, we were asked as trainers whether we would, we would be willing to, um, whether we would consider doing, you know, offering that, you know, being included as one of, as part of that service um, mm. here in the UK, but I don't think it's coming to the UK anytime soon. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, that's sort of what I'm thinking. I mean, Nicola, do you think, presumably there are clients who would find that a good thing? to have a kind of, you know, faceless bookkeeper to just check up their work? I mean, do you think that's going to take off? Is there anything to worry about? Um, I, I don't think so. I think people like the, the personal interaction. I think if, you know, I think if it's just some faceless thing, we've had other things tried to do that, haven't we? It just hasn't worked. So I, I think they're going to struggle. And like you said, who's doing, I mean, the amount of emails I get for, do you need help with your, your practice? We can do bookkeeping for you. Emails from goodness knows where around the world. Yes. And you just think, oh my goodness. So, I mean, they're using those kind of services. And I don't know about your clients, Sylvia, but a lot of mine, they're quite unique in, in how they operate. And it's not necessarily bog standard bookkeeping. There's, there's little quirks here and there that you, you get to know the client and what is needed and required. And I know that just wouldn't work those sort of things. And they would just put it through as a blanket, whatever, and it, it's not right then, is it? It's not, it's I right. think that they will do it. They'll base it on just doing it from the bank, um, the bank record from, uh, you know, from the bank feeds or whatever. Um, I remember very early on in my QuickBooks training um, experience, probably the first people I ever trained, it was a big firm of accountants in London. And when I was trying to go through the QuickBooks training, they said, oh, we don't need this. We're just bookkeepers. You know, we're, we're the bookkeepers. And literally all they did was process stuff from bank statements. They didn't even look for backup documentation. Um, and this was in a big firm of accountants. And it was literally, even at that point, just posting stuff from the bank statements. I mean, and obviously, you know, it becomes a lot more easy, easy now than it was even when we, I was first training for QuickBooks four or five years ago. Um, and I was... I, was quite shocked by that. I thought, well, that's not a bookkeeper. That's just a data processor. Um, and um, I don't think they were getting paid for being, you know, and, and so for those of us who take pride in being bookkeepers, that's never going to be an option. And I, it may, it may work for, I mean, if you've got, I don't know, a client who's, who's in a massive company constantly processing, you know, the same stuff over and over and over. Well, yeah, you then that might work. But as you, as Nicholas says, it, every client is unique, you know, it's, They've all got little quirks. And I suppose you could say that as well um, about bookkeeping software. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Stand yeah, up. yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've all got the little quirks. They've all, all got the little quirks. And one of the things, just uh, yeah. I did want to say, there's some new stuff come out in QuickBooks this summer, which um, I quite like. The one thing that is coming, has recently come out. So there, there is this tax something or other, tax checker that hasn't, it's, it's coming, it's in there but it doesn't it's not out in the main thing yet but the main thing is the month end review that is coming up which is going to be so the thing i one of the, the features in quickbooks that i really really like is their bit that module so in the VAT module there's a thing called smart scan and when you hit smart when you're ready to do your VAT return you hit smart scan it goes through it says all these things um have got uh, are not going to be included on your VAT return and you can go through and check whether they you know they should or shouldn't be they maybe they should be they shouldn't be but that's fine and then it says all these things um you, you've got all these things that haven't been reconciled in your bank yet and then you can go and check them and it'll say you've got this is these are all the things it'll automatically pick up and, and run you a, a, a report with the everything
everything's in the 20%. This is all in, this has all gone into re reverse charge. Did you mean that? You can go through and, and so, and you can correct, you can work through that and correct everything or check everything. And then you can hit, you know, I'm ready to file my VAT return. And, and I really like that feature. It's really speeded up, sped up, speeded up the, the, the VAT process. Um, and there's also a, uh, they have a VAT, uh, it's a, an audit report, a VAT audit report, and that will, which I now send to my clients, and it has, it lists everything, it lists the VAT 100 at the top, it lists all the VAT detail stuff at the, and it lists any exceptions that are brought forward, so things that um, have come through from the previous period, and I, and they, they brought in now this um, bookkeeping month, month end review, and it's out this summer, I know there's a webinar on it next Tuesday that people can sign up for, um, and that's going to do a very similar thing, but a bookkeeping review basically at the month end. So you can go through and you say, yeah, we've done all of this, tick, tick the box, somebody's reviewed it, um, and it's all it's all going through. And there's, I mean, there's whole loads of other, other new stuff coming out, but there's the, that particular feature I'm, I'm looking forward to. Mm, that all seems lovely, just to sort of help with the systematizing of the business. Nicola, did anything, did anything there kind of stick out for you? Anything that you can do in Zero better? <laughs> <laughs> probably checking your VAT returns because obviously VAT returns so it's yeah. all the businesses who are VAT registered but under the threshold are going to be included in making tax digital as of is it April yeah. 2022 yeah so seems like ages away but yeah yeah I know but I've already got my post-it note to, to start signing making sure those are up there and, and it will Why make wait? The, the VAT um, much easier I mean zero um, MTD VAT is, is very easy um, it links perfectly to HMRC brilliantly and you can you can see your reports, print them out, send them to the client to get to get the confirmation that they're happy and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it, it links perfectly well at that. I, I can't see that it's a, a problem with that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I think Zero has got, it's got so much in there, probably like QuickBooks, but you probably just sort of scratch the surface a little bit on some of these things and mm. other people dive into other bits of it. So it's, I mean, I look, looked on the sort of back market marketplace a while back and there was over 700 apps that it links to yeah. I mean, the vast amount of other things that it links to even you know the auto entry receipt banks right through to the bank fees right through to the crms and goodness knows what that it links yeah. to that actually clients and or yourself can sort of recommend what works well and what doesn't work yeah. well so, i mean there's so much to explore even within the product itself there's so much to explore with in terms of there's an app on, you can use on your phone, you can have the expenses that you can then, if you've got lots of employees that are constantly having to buy things, they can upload their receipts straight through a separate app. So it goes straight into mm. their expense claims. Yeah. Um, that sort of things. So they've got zero projects that you can manage all your sort of projects within your company, if you're that sort of company that needs to manage projects. I mean, there's just so much in there. It just the, the list is endless really. Mm. But is this, you know, you know are there discussions about software? You know, if people do have more questions, is this the kind of thing that the, the Cardiff branch and the Berkshire branch meetings might be covering? And, um, you know, are there kind of discussions about this sort of thing? We have done in the past. I've, I've tried to be fairly um, broad minded about it. I, one of my problems is trying to find, pick, figure out what my branch members want to, um, want to actually have talked yeah. about. So if any of you are out there, send me an email, put something on the Facebook. And, and I'll come up with something that we can we can produce. We mm -hmm. have had we've had QuickBooks out. We've had um, we've had um, Zero out. We've had Tax Pack. I don't know. We've had Tax Filer yet. We've, um, there, there's been various software things we have had. I try not to put too much software stuff in. Um, and you tend to both. You're running events once a month still during lockdown. I haven't done so many lately. You don't want to do you know, Well, the thing is, there's so much here, so much brilliant stuff here on ICB TV that, um, you know, I kind of think, well, we've, we've done that recently, you know, that most, and lots of people are logging into it, aren't they? I think, um, how many people have you got watching it nowadays, Amy? Um, I, don't, I don't know, I'm afraid. <laughs> there is a report on a weekly basis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I was supposed to read, and um, yeah, I mean, we we had the yeah, it was more it was more popular right at the beginning when I think everyone was desperately worried that they were going to miss something yeah. hugely important. But Jackie, uh, Jackie and Gary on a Friday remain very popular. Um, yeah, I just said Faye says pay dashboard are keen to speak to ICB. Well, um, without further ado, I think we should probably wrap up. I am 
so hot. Thank you everybody for um, sticking with us and particularly obviously Nicola and Sylvia. Um, that was super fun and um, I just want to say Sue Bruden says that she loved it. It was brilliant and well done everyone. So um, yeah, thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank yes. you everyone. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.